Hi, I'm so glad you could join us for Good News Radio. Today, Jennifer Anderson, Lily's mom, is working in the kitchen, but I think she's about to be interrupted. Let's listen in and find out what happens. I won. I won. I beat you, Nico. No, I beat you. Mom, who won? I think it was a tie, Lily, but I'm not sure. What I saw was two little tornadoes come crashing through my kitchen door, and that same door slam behind them. Sorry, Mom. I'll try to remember not to slam the door next time. Are you going to bake something? Yes. I was just about to start on a cake for Mrs. Martinez next door. She doesn't have a lot of friends, and I want to make sure she knows we care and are here if she needs us. Can we help? All right. Nico, will you get the sugar and cocoa out of the pantry? I think we'll make this cake chocolate. Chocolate? My favorite. It looks like we have all the ingredients, and I have my favorite chocolate cake recipe right here. Nico, have you ever made a cake from scratch before? No. Is it hard? Sometimes. But I've made this one a lot, so I know how to do it. I really like to bake. Baking actually reminds me of my favorite story. It's the best story in the world, and it's completely true. How about I tell it to you while we mix up this cake? That sounds fun. The first character in this story is God, and getting all the ingredients together makes me think of him. When we make a cake, we are creating something but we are using things that are already here to make it. I've got flour, sugar, butter, eggs, cocoa, and all these ingredients out on the table. But when God creates, he doesn't need anything. He created the entire universe just by speaking. That's how amazing and powerful he is. Before we put flour in, just for fun, Why don't you try to see if you can make all the ingredients and put them in the bowl just by speaking? That's just silly, but I know it won't work, but okay. Cake up here! (laughs) Let me try. Let there be cake. Nope, it don't work for me either. (laughs) (laughs) No, it didn't. We can't make cake just by speaking. Because we aren't God. But God made the whole world without any ingredients. He just spoke and poof, there it was. And he created a world way more amazing than a chocolate cake. He made a world that was beautiful and good. He didn't need any ingredients or instructions. He created people with intelligence and creativity so that we can figure out how to put things he made together and make all kinds of interesting foods. I know Lily's favorite dessert is anything chocolate. What about you, Nico? Do you have a favorite dessert? I love ice cream cake. Ooh, that's a good one, too. Maybe we can make that another time you come over to hang out with Lily. God didn't just give us creativity to put foods together to make all these fun desserts. He also created us to enjoy the world around us. We can see beautiful sunsets and taste yummy cake and smell roses and touch soft puppy's fur. God loves it when we enjoy the good things he made. And out of all the amazing things he made, people are his most special creation And that includes you, Nico. And you, Lily. Wow, I didn't know that. It's true. And another thing that is true is that God loves you more than you can ever know. Even more than Lily loves chocolate. And I really love you, Lily. But God loves you more than even I do. God loves you, Nico, more than anyone else in the world loves you. That's another part of what makes God awesome. He has amazing love. Okay, it looks like we are ready for our wet ingredients. Nico, 
can you look at the recipe and tell me how many eggs it calls for? Sure. Uh, it says three eggs. Perfect. Can you break the eggs into the bowl? Okay, like this. Good job. It can be important to follow the recipe for the cake to turn out right. What do you think might happen if we added the wrong ingredients? Let's say I put in a cup of salt instead of sugar. Do you think this would taste good? No, wait, that would taste really bad. Exactly. And that reminds me of the next part of the true story. When God made the world, he made it beautiful and perfect. He made it with rules to help it run right, and he has instructions for how to live so our lives are good and right. God put the very first two people in a garden, and he gave them an important rule. But they did something far worse than not following the instructions in a recipe. They didn't follow God's instructions and disobeyed him. When we disobey God, it's called sin. And after the first two people sinned, everyone else was born wanting to follow their own way instead of following God's good and perfect instructions. Do you know any of his instructions for how to live, Nico? Well, I know God doesn't want me to hurt other people and that it's wrong to steal things. Yes, those are both examples of sins people do. The beautiful world God had made was now broken and messed up by sin. People were now thinking about themselves and what they wanted, and they didn't care if they hurt God or others or even themselves. When those first two people sinned, it brought sadness and sickness and death into the world. It would be like if I took this good cake we are making and dumped poison into it. Wow, that would be really bad. Uh, you aren't going to do that. Are you, Miss Jen? No, Nico, of course not. This cake is for sharing, not for poisoning. Oh, good. I didn't think you would poison it just to tell a story. No, but now it was like the world was poisoned and sin is so bad that it has to be punished. And just like a poisoned cake can't be eaten, sinful people can't be close to God. That's the worst news ever. God had made people, and he knows what is best for us. And the best thing in the whole world for people, better than chocolate cake every day, is having a close friendship with the God who created us. And now sin had made it so people couldn't be close to God and would have to one day face a terrible punishment for every wrong thing they do. Sin is really serious. At this point in the story, God could have said, Well, I guess I'm done with these people. They have brought sin into the world and poisoned what I made good. But he didn't. Do you know what he did instead? No, what did he do? At just the right time, he sent his perfect son, Jesus. Jesus came from heaven to earth and was born as a baby and grew up doing normal things children did when he was on earth. When was that? This would have been about 2,000 years ago. We celebrate Jesus' birth at Christmas, right, Mom? That's right, Lily. Last year, Mom told me not to eat more than one piece of cake. But I didn't listen to her, and I snuck two pieces when no one was looking and ate them in my room. But Mom found me because I got sick. That's right. You broke God's instruction to obey your parents when you ate that cake. But unlike you and me, Jesus never broke any of God's instructions. He was perfect. He didn't deserve any punishment. But even though he had never thought, said, or did anything that went against God's perfect way, some people who hated him got him arrested, beaten with a whip, and nailed to a cross, which was a painful way people killed the worst criminals where Jesus lived. Wait, you mean Jesus was hurt by bad men and then he died? How is this your favorite story? This seems like a bad story. That's a good question, Nico. But there was more going on when Jesus died than it seemed. All of this was part of God's perfect, amazing plan, 
and he was doing this because of his great, amazing love. Okay, now help me pour the cake into the pans. Lily, you hold the sides of this pan, and Nico, you hold the sides of the other pan. Now don't let it move. That looks just about right. Now let's put it in the oven and set the timer. But Miss Jen, what about the story? What was the thing that the people didn't know? The heat of the oven actually reminds me of that. Would you want to go into a hot oven? No way! But if we didn't put the cake batter into the oven, it wouldn't cook, would it? It wouldn't even turn into a cake. When the batter goes into the oven, it is so something greater can come from the heat. In a far bigger way, when Jesus died, it seemed like a really terrible thing. But something greater was happening. Jesus was taking that great big punishment for all the sins of the world onto himself. He was making the way for sinful people like you and me to be able to be closer to God. God tells us about this in his word, the Bible. It says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. If I had put poison in the cake, even putting the cake in the hot oven couldn't have fixed it. But by taking the punishment for sin onto himself when he died on the cross, Jesus made the way for sinful people to no longer have to be punished for their sin and to have a friendship with God forever. And then comes my favorite part of the story. On the third day after Jesus died, he came back to life. Do you mean like a zombie or a ghost? Nope. He came back fully alive. He walked around and talked to his friends. He told them about how his death was all part of God's bigger plan. He helped them know that because of what he had done, they could follow God and live his way. Then he went back to heaven. In a while, the timer will go off and the cake will be done. And after they cool and we put the icing on them, we will have a big, beautiful cake. The finished cake reminds me of what God is doing now and what he will do someday in the future. Even though it's been 2,000 years since Jesus died and came back to life, people today are still putting their trust in him to save them from the punishment of sin and give them friendship with God. The people who put their trust in Jesus are God's people. And one day, God will make everything new and beautiful and good. There won't be any sickness or sadness or death. And all of God's people will live with him forever. Well, that's an amazing story, Miss Jennifer. Do you think God would let me be one of his people? Do you think he would want me to be his friend? I know he would. He tells us in the Bible that if you believe in Jesus and what he did on the cross for your sins, if you trust in him as the only way to have the punishment for your sins taken away and have friendship with God, then you will be one of his people. He will always be with you, helping you to follow his instructions and grow in your friendship with him. Nico, now that you know the truth about what Jesus did for you, do you believe in him to take away sin's punishment and give you friendship with God? Yes, Miss Jennifer. Do you want to tell God about what you believe right now? Just talk to God like he is right here with you, because he is. He will hear you when you talk to him. Okay, um, hi God. I haven't really played all that much before, but Miss Jennifer says you're listening. I believe that Jesus took the punishment for my sins when he died on the cross. I'm sorry about all those bad things I have done. I want to be one of your people and have friendship with you. Help me follow your instructions like you followed the recipe for the cake. Um, amen. That was a great prayer, Nico. And remember, it's not the words that are important, but what you believe in your heart. I can talk to your mom about taking you to Sunday school with Lily if you would like. It's a church. Church is a place you can learn more about God and His ways. I can also get you a Bible. The Bible is God's Word, and it has how He tells us what He wants us to know about Him and how to live. It also has the whole story I told you today. Oh, I think that's the timer. 
Let's go check the cake and see if it's done. It sure does smell like it. It smells amazing. And if it's done, can we have some? We have to let it cool first and ice it. Then we can each have a piece of the smaller one before we take the bigger one over to Mrs. Martinez. And as we eat it, we can thank God that Nico has chosen to believe in Jesus today. How about you? Do you believe in Jesus to save you from sin? If you do, tell God about it. Ask God to help you grow in your friendship with him and follow his instructions. If you haven't believed in Jesus as your Savior, will you think about the story Miss Jennifer told Nico? The good news of what Jesus did is all true, and he did it for you. Will you believe in him to save you from sin's punishment and give you friendship with God today? Well, thanks for listening today. I hope you can join us again for our next Good News Radio. 